You know what that bell means, right, Mr. Mancini? Well, Rome, I'm going to tell you something right now, okay? I'm from. Rome, I'm going to tell you something right now, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. I'm glad you ring that bell like that because that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling like I'm feeling like the 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 ultimate warrior shaking the ropes right now. Okay, ready to ready to pounce on somebody because who, listen, I, we got some solid advice from people that really know what they're doing on YouTube and stuff. And he gave us a, a tremendous compliment, and he said, guys, just watch out because there's some things you can't say on a war. <clears throat> you'll be, for, for the lack of a better word, you'll be like disqualified, right? Right, right. So I'm, I'm going to keep it clean, but who in the Blue Hill is Eric Bischoff? And, 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 and you know when I say that I know what Eric Bischoff is. I know who he is, and I know he's a WWE Hall of Famer. Wait, 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 wait! Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. Wait, no, no, no! Did, what did he do? Get inducted with Mr. T and Muhammad Ali? I mean, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Wait, what, what, what bones did he break? And what, and what injuries did he get? And, oh, and what you know, sweat did he put out there? I, I don't Hall well, of Famer, but you know, from what and I induct himself, from what I understand, from looking at his bio, he was a worker from '86 to '91. Uh, listen uh, again, coming from the lowly, yeah, he's a worker, the, the lowly jobber. But let yeah, me tell real you work, something, real let me work tell, of art. Something from yeah. this lowly jobber, and the reason why I'm I'm responding this way is because I watched the dark side with with Eddie with with, with Beefcake. Beefcake, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to be a professional wrestler for the WWF slash WWE. You have to dedicate yourself. You have to train hard. And 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 Lord knows R Rome is double-sided. He trained hard with the weights and in the ring. I'm specifically talking right now in the ring. Because, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I look like the Pillsbury Doughboy. But you have to train hard in the ring. And you have to hit a, a certain level in order, no matter what position you're in, if you're going to be a jobber for Vince McMahon, you better be a damn good jobber. And you know what that means? That means that really you know how to work. But if you're that good of a jobber, you Well, know you wouldn't have been around so long well, if you weren't, right? I, I would, no, I wouldn't have been around. Right. Which, which, which comes to my point. You know, maybe Beefcake worked with one guy or two or three or four or five or six, or these guys came in for one job. If they bumped into him right now, Eddie wouldn't know what the hell, who the hell he is. When Eddie sees me, he knows who I am. Okay, when Valentine sees me, he knows well, who I am. you've been around a long time. Or, right, so... You have so, notoriety, kid. But, but the thing about it is, is you had to have a skill, and, and you had to be marketable, and, you know, you had to have the tools. And for Eric Bischoff to say that, you know, Eddie just was Hogan's tax that was the cost of doing business with hogan you had to pay his tax and his tax was brutus beefcake oh man if i didn't care about throwing money out of the out of the door out of the window i would have broke my tv who the hell is he to say that about eddie about brutus like that who the hell is he to say that he's just a bag carrier for Hogan. Look, look, we all knew back in the day, we're almost 84, 85, 86, and we all knew that Eddie was Hogan's best friend. And we knew that 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 Beefcake took some liberties. You know, every now and then somebody would sure. go to Terry and go, hey man, he needs to talk to you about Beefcake. And and and, and Terry would go, what do he do now? You know what I mean? And we all know that, but you know what? It, it, they were best friends. That's the way the business worked, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Guess what? A, a, a Beefcake came in not because he wasn't talented. He had a marketable gimmick. Uh, he was Brutus Beefcake. Yeah. Uh, as nobody had Roma's body in that dressing room, and I want you to look at old tapes and then come back to this podcast and tell me if one person had a body like Paul Roma. Well, in the same sense... 
Nobody had an ass like Beefcakes. That's why he was called Beefcake. You know, no, it, and it, that was his gimmick. You know what I mean? And and you know what? I worked with him more than several times. I worked with him on singles. I worked with him with him and Valentine. And, and speaking of Valentine, if if Valentine takes you in, listen, Greg Valentine, wrestling royalty, I had. He had the opportunity to look at Vince and when they go, we're going to team you guys up, and him go, no, I'm not doing that. Right. He didn't. He took him in. He saw he had potential, and he and he taught him. Valentine was an expert technician in the ring, and you know he he is his father was Johnny Valentine for God's sakes. He was wrestling royalty. So if and Greg doesn't listen. Hammer doesn't accept many people, okay? He doesn't, you know, he doesn't put himself out there. You, you say hi to him, he'll go, <sighs> right. But if he sits there and he talks to you, if he gives you a smile, then you're somebody to him, you know what I mean? And he took Beefcake in and taught him the business. How dare Eric Bischoff, you know, he saying, well, you know, and, and, and he, he, mentioned beefcake like Brutus and they beefed them out. Brutus, boop, boop, beefcake. I mean, really, really? Well, really, that's that's really. not all he touched on. <clears throat> um, you know, a lot of what I saw him touching on was, you know, him trying to put himself over of how he went and, and got these guys, which was just a complete and blatant lie. He didn't go out and get anybody, okay? Vince released all the people that he took in. Because Vince had no use for these guys anymore. You know, me me counting. So, you know, he acted like, you know, he, he was this genius. And he had all these angles. The only problem was everybody else that came into WCW was running the business. They were telling Bischoff what to do. That's why WCW went under. He was listening to all the boys telling them all these different angles, what he's supposed to do, who he's supposed to buy up and bring in. So they were all taking care of their friends. So all this money was being spent. There was no ratings. The ratings were very low. And now what? You're taking credit because you, you're trying to remanufacture and said you did this and you did that on your own. The boys were calling the shots. Hogan was bringing in the nasty boys. He was bringing in, say, Beefcake or, or say, Valentine or whoever he wanted to bring in. These are who they, well, who they brought in just to get these guys paydays because they were done with the WWF. You were there. You should know. I know. And, and to listen to this shoot video that, that he supposedly, you know, this interview that he was having, he was trying to make himself out to be like he was some, some genius. What he, what he failed to acknowledge, whether he realized it in his mind or not, was that he could never keep up with the ratings with Vince because he kept listening to all these other guys that were just looking for paydays for them and their friends. That's all they were looking for. It was a free payday. Go talk to, you know, to uh, Eric Bischoff. You know, I talked to him. Don't worry, you're going to get in. And Eric's talking about, you know, paying these guys this or paying these guys that. They didn't strong arm him. They didn't have to strong arm him. He was ignorant to the business. He acted like he, he was the big honcho. He was running a monster corporation. But he was, yeah, in one way he was. But in another way, he was a mark to everybody. They sold him a, a, a shitty bag of goods and he bought it. That's what they did. And now we, I listened to him patting himself on the back. Like, you know, he, he had it going on and he had all these monster ratings. I was there. We, we watched the, the people. We, we watched the ratings come by. But again, he listened to too many of the boys. They worked him. Hogan admitted to working Bischoff. Telling Bischoff when he was in the office, oh, you should be in movies. You're a great looking guy. And Eric's eating it all up. And, and Hogan's telling us the story and everybody's laughing, you know, at, at Eric Bischoff. The WCW to Eric Bischoff, his WCW was Vince McMahon's XFL. Okay. It, it was, it was a failure. And it, you know, 
I don't blame these guys because we know the boys. We know the boys. We know the boys. We don't blame these guys if they're out from Vince and then there's I either go to WCW or do the independent circuit. Hell, I'm going to WCW. And if they're going aim if between the boys because there's loyalty and a brotherhood, they go, hey, man, come here. They're going to pay you a ton of money, man. It's ridiculous. Right. They're throwing money at us like crazy. Kind of like AEW. Right. Oh, AEW's yeah. got the lowest ratings ever, ever. I, you know, again, I, I, I reached out to uh, the owner and um, never heard back. He, he takes a chance. Uh, it's it's a win win for him, uh, right off the rip. I could save him millions of dollars, um, and that's before bringing the ratings up. It's getting rid of the dead wood. That is the most important thing. But again, when you have money flowing through your hands, so much of it, and it's pretty much endless for the most part. Nah, eh, what do you need me for? But that being said, um, you know, going just real quick, right back to you know where you were. That's. The, the boys, um, as you said, will always take care of the boys. For the most part, when you're friends, when you're buddies. And that's good. You know, that's cool. Um, but they will, for lack of a better word, they are the quickest to set up the biggest or the quickest Ponzi scheme going. Right? It's a scam. I'm going to bring my boy in. We're going to do this. They're going to do that. They're going to bring your ratings up. You'll see. And then Eric bites. Sends them, a, you know, gives them a contract, calls them in, whatever, and they're on the payroll. And then here comes a couple more. And then here comes some more. And Flair was no different. Flair did the same thing. You know, they were fighting. Him and Hogan were fighting, you know, who had the biggest penis. And lack of a better word, um, you know, they, they both failed. They were way past uh, what people wanted to see. The Hogan-Flair match was just years past. You know, it's just it's done and gone. Um, they tried to pull it off, didn't work, just didn't happen. Didn't get the, you know, the big, big, big payroll that they thought they were going to get to come and watch it. So, but anyway, um, it just really made me angry that, you know, again, <laughs> you know, when we were at the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame and, you know, uh, Ralph had to open up his big mouth when I was in front of Hammer and Beefcake and he's like, Oh, boss, don't you have a story about Beefcake? And I went, no, Ralph, I don't. And now Missy's like, What's, what, what story do you have, Mario? And, <laughs> and he's looking at me like this. Because <laughs> he can't remember. You know, I could see in Eddie's face, he's like, oh, no. Right, what's but, coming out of your uh, mouth. What's coming out of me and CD's mouth, right? right. But, but, you know, you know, and I told the story about his car breaking down when we were in a blizzard and... And he had no headlights, and I guided him back to Stanford because he was sharing a condo with Hogan off exit nine. And then I thought we had had bonded, right? And 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 I'll say it again: he he always offered to pay for my gas. And um, and then the following week, I saw him in Poughkeepsie, and I walked up to him thinking we had this bond, and I was going to shake his hand. And I was like ten feet away from him, and I made eye contact with him, and he went. And he <laughs> walked away, and I went, that son of a bitch just chinned me, man. I drove through a blizzard at 30 miles an hour uh. just to get him home. He just chinned me. And I went up to Strongbow, and I said, where's Hogan, boys? <laughs> and I, he's around the corner in the room to the side, and his, his door was cracked, and I pushed it open, and he go, and Hogan looks at me. He goes, what's up, Eminem? He goes, I go, I need to talk to you about your friend, He's like, what do you do now? I go, oh, I'm so pissed right now. And I told him the whole story, you know. So, Eddie, you know, I always say this about Eddie on podcasts. If people think he was an asshole, that's fine. But he's my asshole. Because I have the right to say that because I was there with him and I worked with him. And, uh, you know what I mean? He overcame an injury, which, which I finally saw and finally understood how it happened. Right that would have killed a lot of people and nobody would have ever came back to wrestling. It was fortunate. And, yeah. And he did. And you know what, it, it, you know, even when he came back, you know what I mean? When he ripped down and, and he came back, you know, he, he tried every which way to make it work and he gave the effort and he never gave up. And, um, you know, it's just a shame 
that I, I hope when Eddie sees Eric Bischoff, he spits right in his face. He spits right, because even in the condition Eddie's in now, he'd probably still be able to kick the shit out of Eric Bischoff. So, I, you know, I hope when he sees him, he spits right in his face, because he just made him, he just, you know, made him sound like a, a side of mac and cheese in the wrestling business. And he wasn't. It, it, he wasn't. You know what I mean? It just really, really pissed me off that he would he would say stuff about that. You know what I mean? And um, you know, he, he, you know, even even Brian Blair, which I like Brian. You know, I, I'm glad you brought Brian up. I like Brian. I, I'm glad you brought Brian up. You know, I want to touch on something. Um, you know, I've done many a shoot video. <clears throat> excuse me about a lot of different different guys. Um, if you ask me about them, I will tell you uh, just how I feel. And I'm glad he brought Brian up. I am actually going um, going to be with Brian in Germany. Now, in the past, I've said um, some things about Brian. And we've, we've spoken since. We've seen each other since. There are people that can and will change. And there's some people that he just has. won't. I'll say he right? has. Right. Um, and I've said some, I've told stories about, you know, wrestling in the ring with him and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, Brian has changed. Uh, I think Brian uh, now is such a really great guy. I mean, just everything, you know, about him now. Whereas before, you know, he was like all of us. I mean, people say what they want to say about me. I get it. And, that, and that's all good. Um, you know, Brian was a bit of a jerk. Asshole, whatever you want to say. Brian um, Blair. Brian <laughs> Blair. Yeah. But, you I know, like the Jim Brunzel, but that Brian Blair. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? He he's he's a, a I think he's he's really changed. Super guy. I said this about uh, about Bagwell also. Yeah. You know, I mean, you want to talk about you know an uh, asshole. The, the, he was Bagwell, such an asshole. Bagwell was s but, such a gentleman on his. Yeah, his and last time I I was with him, you know, I was like, wow, you know, this guy. It, it, and I believed it was legit. Um, really, really changed, and it was so refreshing to see. You know, he even admitted to being, you know, acting the way that he acted back then. Um, so, you know, there's guys that that can change, that are willing to change, that want to change. Um, you know, me. People ask about me. I'm sure there's a question probably fired across right now, um, and, and you could fire it at me. I am who I am. And, you know, am I going to change for, for anybody? No, but I'm willing to forgive and, you know, let, let bygones be bygones, which I've done with, with a lot of guys. Not a whole lot, but, you know, I mean, I could have carried a grudge with Brian because, you know, he was kind of rude back in the day. I don't. Uh, Coco Beware, the little incident we had, I don't. Uh, Bagwell, I don't. You know, it's just, it's just how it is. Even... As, as, as much as myself and Jake the Snake never got along. I don't hold anything against Jake. You know, even if he doesn't like me now, that's fine. Brian, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, Brian... Ah, uh, shoulder. Brian actually... Um, Brian apologized to me. And I said to him, no, I had it coming. Um, I inboxed him when we became friends on Facebook. And... Um, I go, do you, do you remember Los Angeles? And he's like, no, I don't remember Los Angeles. So I was um, I was working out in the gym at Gold's Gym in, in L.A. And um, Hogan and, and Brian Blair were working out together. And I was at the tricep, tricep pushdown, and I looked at Hogan, and I said to him in pig Latin, I said, um, wow, look at all the bras in here. I said it to him in pig Latin, and um, he said, oh, me and C, you like that? And I said, yeah, well, yeah, I was 19 years old. He goes, good, now you train with me. And Hogan drilled me into the ground. Not as bad as Roma, but he drilled me into the ground when we were working out with the weights. <clears throat> so we ended up on a decline sit-up bench. And he goes, get on there and do and give me 50 sit-ups. Now I knew. No, he couldn't do 50 no. sit-ups. So now I get on there and I, I do. Like, Only do what you, I, put out what you can do yourself. I do like, 
I do like seven or eight of them, and then I, my body starts shaking, and I start struggling, and Blair gets down on my face, and he goes, let's go, fatty, let's go, fatty, let's go, Pillsbury dough boy, come on, he's poking my stomach, come on, fat so, you know, and I got really humiliated. Hogan didn't do any of that. So when I failed and I got off, Hogan went, come here. And he put his arm around me. We walked away from Blair and he looked at me and he said, <clears throat> this is your business. When you're in here, it's business. Do your business and leave. And I said, yes. Yes, sir. And he said, okay, I'm not good. And that was it. So I reminded Brian of that incident. And he's like, man, I'm really sorry, Mario. I didn't, I didn't, you know. I See what I'm, that's what I'm talking I about. And I said, Brian, actually, as a rookie, green guy in the, in, the, in the wrestling business, for me to talk like that to two veterans, especially the heavyweight champion, I said, I had that coming. He goes, no, no, I should have never treated you like that. No. I go, no, no, actually, I just wanted to remind you of it. I actually had that coming because of, of you know, my attitude in, in, in the gym, so... But you're right. He has changed. He said, "I apologize right away." So I think he's a he's a super guy. Yeah. The thing I Brian. felt the thing I felt worst about was the way you know what Eddie can't fool me, and it, the poor guy is in such a hard spot because he's sitting there going, "I want the love of my life, my best friend Missy," but he's missing his brother. So when you watch Hogan induct him into the Hall of Fame like he was watching the replay of it, you can see his bottom lip was is like starting to go. Who's that? Beefcake? Beefcake? Yeah, his bottom lip is starting to go. I didn't see the induction. He look, you know, he's watching it on the documentary, and ah. you can see in his face just the love he has for Hogan and how much that meant to him. And I know at that moment he's dying to pick up the phone and go, Terry, I, you know, but is he betraying his wife by doing that? And, it, you know, he's caught in the middle of something really hard, man, really hard. But, Eddie, listen to me. Listen to the jobber. You see Bischoff spit in his face because he was disrespectful for, to you. And we're from the 80s, man. They might be disrespectful today, but we live by the rules of back then. Every day of our lives, we live the wrestling business by those rules, not the new ones. Yeah, but you listen, you know what? I agree with you. 100% I agree with you. But, you know, today's day and age, you can't get away with it. You got to just leave it be. Somebody like Bischoff, I don't, even though I know him, that, you know, I worked in that company with him, you know, will he go and, 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 you know, will he take it like a man? You know, what's coming to him, maybe give it back? Or will he run and call the cops and have him arrested? Is it worth it? I don't think so. I don't think it's worth it. But that's just me. I mean, at the end of the day, that's just how I see it. Um, you know, you forgot something, man. Because, you know, we jumped right into this. I should have rung the bell again because... Mancini's Maniacs. Don't you ever forget Mancini's Maniacs. And Roman Nation, I know they're on the line. I don't know about your guys. You better start talking to some of your peeps out there, brother. Okay? Because Roman Nation is on track. I know Robert Bush is out there. I know Brian Massey. I know you're out there, man. PDD, that's right, DDD, PDD, I know you're out there, there's a lot of people out there, I can't name them all, Stephen Lee, I mean, come on, everybody's Listen, out there, John, there and is one Mancini maniac watching right now, I know for sure, guaranteed, and you're gonna love this, wait, did you pay that person, no, okay, no, I just want to make sure you didn't throw him a few bucks to get on, you know, watch you, all right, this Mancini maniac, go on, it is right up our alley, Okay. And you're going to give me a chance to guess who it is? No, you're never going to guess who it is. Never so going to guess who it is. my friend. You have a friend other than me. I do. Wow. It is this guy friend. is really getting up in the world. It, it must be one of maniacs. What is it? Come on. It is my friend. Come on. Cut to the chase. Stephen Massaro. Okay. I know. Vietnam veteran. Uh, okay. All right. There you go. Vietnam veteran. Well, let, let's, let's touch on that. Let's touch on 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 uh, on that. Um, you know, Connecticut. 
Connecticut. You see that right there? They honored Vietnam veterans. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, it's wonderful. It took them 51 years. 51 years to honor our veterans. Are you... And then they were on TV boasting. Like they did something so damn great. It took you 51 years to honor. To honor our veterans. It's going to take you 51 more years to, you know, maybe Desert Storm veterans or... Or, uh, you know, I mean, Rocky Freedom or what, what, what? 51 years. That's a long time. It's insanity. It's absolutely insanity. Let me tell you something. Look. 51 years later. 51 years later. Thanks a lot. I mean, you know, what took you so long? Seriously. 51 years. What, did you wait for all the Vietnam veterans to pass away? Is that what you were waiting for? That what you were going to hand something out? Maybe you didn't have to hand so much out after that? I, I don't get it. 51 years. I just don't get it. 51 years yeah. ago, man, was Look, 1973. When you join the core, you're willing to die for something bigger than you. I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to. I mean, any, any part. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You get the Coast Guard called in. I mean, th this is what you're talking about. It shouldn't take 51 years. Just, you know, somebody missed the boat on this. You know, God forgive me. I, I'm so sorry. I'll pay more attention. I'll write it down, although I'm in the bathroom in the morning getting ready for work. But I listen to Tucker Carlson every morning while I'm getting ready for work. And he's had this woman on. I'm so sorry. I, for, I, I didn't recall her name. But she was former FBI. And she said today, I want the general public to understand our military and our our police they're not doing it for the money they actually want to serve and i think that's what a lot of people forget oh why'd you join the army oh, i want to go to college no you know they do it because they want to serve and protect they want to serve other people they're uh, listen when the night before I graduated, and the, the dean went absolutely berserk when I said this, the night before I graduated law school, there was there's a a a, um, a chat room for the law school, and the dean came in and said, "You know, if you become a lawyer, what's that mean to you?" And everybody started chiming in, going um, to zealously represent a client. Um, to defend the innocent, to, and they all started giving different questions, answers. And when I went across the the auditorium to get my Juris Doctor, and he handed to me and hugged me, he whispered in my ear, he goes, man, did I love what you put last night? I said, I meant it. So for me, it, and, and this is the way the military and our, our police feel, I said in that chat room, to become a lawyer means walking amongst a sea of people on their backs and it's our job to to bend down and pick them up dust them off and say how can i help you and you know what when the military when somebody joins the military they're saying to us don't tread on us because i'm gonna go fight for us don't dare tread on the united states of america because i'm joining the military to make sure i defend it you know and you know, when you look at the police and you look at a, a police car on the side of the highway and you're going 80 and you slam your brakes to get back down to 60, and you go, oh, man, all you see is that evil guy chasing after you to give you a right. ticket. Right. But you know what? That guy saying, listen, I'm here in the event there's a car accident and I can get to you quick in an ambulance, we could save your life. And you broke the law. Right, right. And, and another thing is it, the police officers are like, listen, I'm here in, in case somebody invades your house. Right. You know, I'm going to come, and I'm going to try to protect you. Or if I see somebody loitering that's a drug dealer in your neighborhood, I'm going to go out after them and, and get them, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to frisk them. I'm going to do a Terry Frisk and pat him down and see if I can find anything on him to protect you. You know what I mean? So as they say, and they say the same thing about lawyers, you, you want to avoid them until you need one. 
then you don't want to avoid them until you need one. So it, it's, well spoken. It, it, it's like it, you know. So all of the fifty-one years, the Vietnam War was horrible. I mean, absolutely. I heard. You know what? I I have a brother-in-law that was in the Vietnam War. Mike won't talk to me about the Vietnam War. My father, you want to hear something really, really interesting? I'm his son. All my father would talk to me about when he saw it on TV, and he'd say, see that? That's BS. What you see on TV right now in this movie, it's BS. But when he would get with Mike Roma, yeah. he would go into detail about World War II and what he saw and what he went through. Never talk to me about it, but would talk to Mike about it. Well, wait, you know, you you mentioned something I, I thought really touched on um, our veterans. You said what you had said to your professor, right? So you're you're they're they're face down basically these people, and you're you're walking on their backs, right? And then you reach down and lift them up. Well, for the longest time, you know, the Vietnam vets were walked all over. Yeah. Right? Baby killers. Oh, all the, kinds the of, worst. The yeah. absolute worst. Right, right. And it's taken all this time, all this time, to, to finally, you know, get the respect that they deserve. Because they deserve a lot of respect. It wasn't them that said, hey, I want to go to Vietnam and I'm going to fight. It was our country who sent them there. First responders, right there. Not only that, Roma, imagine not agreeing with what they didn't call a war for a long time, they call it right. the Vietnam conflict. Conflict. So imagine you being there, you sitting there, and you don't believe in w what we're doing and interfering there, and then right. you go to the mail, and you got drafted, right? And, and you don't want to go, but you don't want to. You don't want to be a draft dodger to your country, right? So you you have to go, and you go. You're going to fight something you don't even believe in. And that's what a lot of these guys do because there was a draft. They had no choice. They had no choice. No. Backs against the wall, you either you're a deserter or you go and, and fight, whether you believe in it or not. Yeah. And and the way that they were treated when they came back, and I, I was I, I didn't understand and my father, you know, he explained for the most part and he thought it was disgusting the way people were treating them. Um, again, it was like woke. Right? I mean, you couldn't win. People just were spitting on them. For, for what? You know, you, these are your fellow Americans you're spitting on. And, and now, full circle. For, full circle, Roma. We're apologizing to illegal immigrants who we're killed an American, Karen, killing, an, uh, an American uh, girl. Not just one girl. No. Nah. I mean, it's happening all over. Yeah. You know, raping and killing and, yeah. and both. Full circle, man. Yeah, yeah. That's what you said. And, and we got to worry about calling them illegal. What do they call them now? I don't know. I mean, you know. What do they call let's them? Let's not they, hurt uh, their feelings. Are you, are, 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 is this administration out of their minds? I am. And not only that, the assholes that follow them and agree with them. We're going to hurt their feelings. Yeah. They're murdering American citizens, raping, pillaging, selling drugs, but that's okay. Getting free, free rooms in hotels. Yep. And yet our veterans, we have homeless out on the streets, can't get a room. The rents are and through the And they're getting the roof. money. The rents are through the roof. They're getting cards. They could go into stores and buy. People are getting evicted. Yeah. Now they're squatting. That's the new thing, squatting. Let's squat in someone's house. That's the new thing, yeah. And let's arrest the owner when he tries to throw you out or change the locks. We'll arrest the owner. That's really great. Yeah, that's crazy. What in the hell is going on in America? Seriously, when are the people going to stand up for what's right and stand up when, you know, they talk, I've, I've heard this yet again, okay, yet again. Oh, mega, they're, they're, they're mega, they're nuts, they're mega, they're this. We got to squash mega. What is wrong with you people? Squashing your own American people, your own blood, whether they fought for this country or they didn't fight, but they believe in this country. Think about who is turning on you. Just think about that. Who, when, when you say something and, and they turn on you, what is wrong with you? 
You're turning on your fellow American. For what reason? Because they don't agree with you? They have a right to disagree. That's what's so great about this country. And that's what you're forgetting. So your opinion counts, right? But my opinion doesn't. Well, listen, it's... Right? It, you're it, squashing it, my opinion. It's not coming down to that anymore because they're trying to train everybody to think one way. And by the way, Roma... By the way, I want you. Next time I see it, I'm gonna I'm gonna screenshot it and send it to you. You're not gonna believe this because you have discussed this with me several times. So I'm um, again, I'm listening to, to I'm watching Tucker Carlson. I'm really listening to it on YouTube, and I'm getting ready for work. And I look down at a commercial, and the guy comes down. It comes now. This listen to this guy comes on and he goes, "Did you ever mention something?" while your phone is on and a couple days later it appears well that's big brother and we have a a, a, a program that prevents that and i'm like oh my god oh my god that's what i've been telling him oh my god Roma's i've been telling been, him roma's been telling me this for two years now you called me up and said listen to me i was talking to my daughter and i was talking to her about this movie i haven't seen in years Two days later, it was on. Well, because I have a smart TV. And I said to the TV, well, as, and we'll use uh, uh, Titanic. Hey, I haven't seen Titanic in forever. I can't find it anywhere. And boom, next day, there it is. Yeah. And my daughter looks at me and goes, wow. I said, just name any show you want to see. Just name a movie. And within a couple of days, smart TV, it's going to pick it up and it's going to send it. Just like your phones listen to you. Just like Siri listens to you. You know, when I go to somebody's house and they have Siri, I tell them to unplug it. Uh, yeah, I have mine in my bathroom. So I always say, when oh, you know me, Roma, better than anybody, 40 years. And I go, if they want to listen to that, good luck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even Siri can't handle that one. She Look, turns herself off when he's in the bathroom. Yeah, Roma and I have roamed a few times on the yeah. road over the yeah. years. <laughs> a little bit. But yeah, you know, going back to Big Brother, there's no doubt that's, that's what's going on. Uh, and there's, it's kind of scary when you actually think about it. It is scary, right? Yeah. Battleship. Love the movie. I really do love the movie. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I, I believe in it, that there's aliens and, and, and all that good stuff. And hell, at the end of the day, it's our Navy, man. Damn. Um, so, again, I hadn't seen Battleship in a while. And I've seen it so many times. But I, I was bored. I wanted to see something. I wanted to watch a movie. I said, damn. I wish I could watch Battleship, but it's not on. Bang. Next day, Battleship on my TV. Listen, they're listening, man. At the end of the day, it could be good. It could be bad. But, you know, what do you want them to hear? What do you want them to listen to? Now, let me, let me change gears here, all right? Let me change gears here. So I want to talk about something um, that has been brought up by some of our, our listeners right hey you're doing this for the money you're talking about wwe about vince for the money listen we're not talking about vince for the money we are talking about the truth and what has happened in our days what is probably happening right now what they brought out that's going on and what he's done and his other henchmen have done so understand that you want to write in and ask a question about that it's not about the money all right, we're not making money here like you guys think. We're not getting paid to open up our mouths and, and bury somebody. We're just telling the truth. Nickelodeon, yeah? Nickelodeon, another, you know, what? Are You think these actors are coming out and they're, they're just, they're making money? They're getting paid I watched to the turn whole in thing. Dan Schneider or uh, Brian Peck? I watched the whole thing. Yeah, Brian Peck and Schneider. Two sick individuals. But you know what? Hollywood is protecting them. Without a doubt, Hollywood's protecting them. When's it going to stop? And, you know, I was talking to my daughter, and I said to her, well, I'm upset at the father. And she goes, why, Dad? I said, what do you mean, why? This guy's still walking, walking the earth. He molested my, uh, someone molests you? They're end of days, They're baby. Dead. End of days. <laughs> Roma's kid. Eye kidding? for an eye. I believe oh in the Bible. God. I believe wow. what it says. An eye for an eye. Whoa. You go to go to the Middle East, and they believe in eye for an eye. 
That's why you don't see the crime there that on each on their own people that you see here. Yeah, they're a little barbaric. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't want to live there. But at the end of the day, they do have some respect for one another. You steal in some countries. They're not raping little they, kids, and, 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 and at least not to my knowledge. They chop your limbs off. Let me tell you something. If... Somebody got arrested for that in India. They they would they would um, they would chop their member off because that's what they do. Whatever part of your body commits the crime, like if you steal with your hand, they're going to chop your hand off. And and Roma, you're right. That is that is barbaric. But when you think about what well, I watched, crime? That, well, I watched that whole documentary, and when when he's sitting there going. Just think of the worst sexual acts that you can do to somebody. That's what he did. And you know what, Roma? You said it the last podcast. These people have to live with this for the rest of of their lives. It never goes away. No. It's a wound that never goes no. away. They have to live with it for the rest Look, of their Look, when lives. I went to the Middle East, they took us by a hanging post and showed it to us and said, if you get caught here with drugs, doing drugs, they hang you. The United States ain't going to be able to save you. I was like, wow, that's heavy. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, no. Maybe some of the other guys better worry about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But again, it's real, man. You got to find out what the laws are over there before you go. You know, find out what the rules. And then you go to our our, our, uh, educational system, right? They want more mental health services for schools. You know why that is? Because mom and dad are so damn busy making money, they don't have enough time for their kids. They don't know what their kids are doing. Get out of my hair. Go as long as they're being quiet, as long as I don't see them, and maybe I see, you know, they come home at night, or, hey, they're in their room. Yeah, they're in their room loading guns, building bombs, whatever the case may be, looking to go and attack some school. You don't even know what your kids are doing. You're so damn busy worrying about making money. You don't have time for your own children. Now you want the schools to, you know, add more mental health. Listen, he, me, you guys didn't go through that in school. This is unheard of. I don't ever remember a school shooting growing up. No, but I'll tell you this, Roma. Here's something for you. Here's something for you. We just kicked people's asses. In my in my principal still alive, and he was my guidance counselor. Although when I went to high school, he's he's he was the principal now retired. He will tell you, 1983 was my junior year of high school, and one kid was late to school, and he crossed the double yellow line into oncoming traffic, and he died. Not shortly after that, another kid, in fact. This is the weekend. This is the weekend because they were having a party and it was Easter weekend and he asked me to go and I go, I'm really not interested um, in, in that kind of stuff. And um, he's like, oh, come on. There's going to be a keg there. I'm like, yeah, I really don't. I got a big Italian family. You really can't leave the house. He left that party and took a shortcut through the train tracks and he went up on the platform and he grabbed the live wire and he was gone shortly after that so two kids in my class passed away in a short amount of time in 1983 do you know how much counseling we had from the school zero none right and we went to two wakes and two funerals right we took it on the chin and just kept going roma not one counselor in that school, not we're bringing in psychiatrists and psychotherapists, zero. Do you know why Nothing. that is? Do you know why Nothing. that is? I have my own you know, theory on why that is. A, because parents don't spend enough time with their children. So the kids have no one to turn to, no one to speak to. You know, the, the parents come home and, and the kids try to talk to them like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have time for it, basically. And we have, a, we have a nation of candy asses, what we have. That's what we have. Bunch of candy asses out there. That's the problem. 
counseling. You need counseling? You talk to your friend. You know, biggest uh, one of the biggest jokes comedy is you go to your local barber shop, you talk to the barber, everybody hears it, airs it out, and then good. You don't need therapy anymore. Pretty much the way it was back then. You know what I mean? You talk to somebody, your friends, your buddies. You get over it. My, my friend, God love him, you know, he always wanted to be a singer. And he le- he, this kid couldn't find his way around the block. I swear to God, he couldn't find his way around the block. He drove out to California in one week. We all, none of us believed it. None of his friends believed it. Like I said, he got lost going around the block. That's legit. He got murdered in California. Oh. Um, And we took it hard. Closed casket, uh, which made it even worse for us because we we couldn't see him again. And um, took it hard. We all took it hard. But none of us went to counseling. None of us went to get mental health. Our mental health was amongst each other. That's what it was. You know, in, in my household, it was tough love. You were brought up with tough love, and you know what? I, it's a good thing. These pansies today. That's what's I mean, my God. Kids, kids are six years old, seven years old, and they don't even know if they're a boy or a girl. Yeah. And the parents are letting them, making it okay with Yeah, them. that's what's missing. Because, Roma, we grew up with, if I do something wrong, my father's going to beat my ass. <laughs> and, and today is, if I do something wrong and my father tries to beat my ass, I'm going to call the police. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, you're it's, not going to hit me. I'm going to have you arrested. Excuse me? You know, I'm going to whip you, your ass. You can yeah, have me arrested. Yeah. How's that? But you, believe me, you're getting put down. You're going to get the beating of your life. Those cops are going to come. But it's okay. At the end of the day, you, I'm going to teach you a lesson. My, my, my kid gone. wouldn't even say that to me. It's gone. Wouldn't even say that to me. There is no respect with these kids anymore. They have no regard for, for human life. No respect for anybody. They think you need to respect me. Why? Why should I respect you? Why? You don't even know what respect is. You know, you were mad at the father. I'm mad at the mother because the father... When this kid got manipulated and the mother took over his managing, the father handed everything over to his ex-wife and looked her in the face and said, do not ever leave him alone. But that's what my daughter said. Why aren't you mad at the mother? That's what she asked me. And I said, because as the man of the house, even though he didn't live there, they were divorced as the father. He should have went and whooped that guy's ass. Didn't have to kill him, but beat him three seconds from death and show him what his son is going to suffer every day from this point on because of what you did to him. That's just my own belief. I mean, that's me. Listen, he didn't get much punishment either. The mother can't beat him up. You know what I'm saying? From what I understand, he's writing for Disney. And, and yeah, he, I think he spent 16 months in jail. 16 really? months. Really? 16 yeah. months? 16 You've months. been abusing this, this poor kid for how long? So if nothing else, you know what I mean? Just, and it, again, I just don't see it, people. I just don't see it. And a lot of you could disagree, and, and you're at liberty to do that. But you know what? You're not going to win this battle with me, this argument. just not going to happen. Now, let's switch gears yet again. One more thing. See if we can squeeze this all in. Plus Sean, questions. Sean Diddy Combs. Ho oh, Baby! This guy makes Vince McMahon look like a choir boy from what I'm understanding. And not only that, not only that, all of his people are speaking out against him. Wow. People that have firsthand right on in his house knowledge. And now I guess he's throwing his girlfriend or wife or whoever she is under the bus. Putting all the heat on her that she was moving in narcotics and stuff like that. His life is done. I'll tell you his what. His money's gone. You think his, we're doing this for the money, when right? His money's gone. He's He is gone. Gone. I, I, I just, I, I can't, I, I just don't get it. I just don't understand this trafficking women, little boys, whatever it is, both. I just don't understand it. What is the thrill, man? Where have, where's society gone? You know, you got that, that thing whatever it is 
that you know first jumped on for Budweiser. Budweiser lost their ass in stocks and dumped that person real quick, and then you know they tried to bring the horses back to save their asses, which they they did for the most part. But there's some celebrities that jumped out. Uh, Kid Rock was one of them, which all, all kudos to you, baby. I dug what you were doing, shooting their cans up. Great stuff. Um, but again, you know, wh where's the country gone? You know, kids not knowing what their identity is because parents aren't there to show. The father's not there to show them what a man is. The mom's not there to show the, the girls what a, what a female should be, what she should look for in a man. You know, you should want to marry somebody that, you know, treats you like your dad when he treats you well. Let's get that clear. You know, when, you know, that's what you want, that, that strong person that shows you respect and kindness um, that's there for you. That's what you want in a man. And in a woman, hopefully your mom is there. And, and that's what you want to see in a woman. It's just not there anymore. The kids don't know. They, have, they don't have that upbringing anymore. Not everybody, but a lot of these kids. That's why they're so screwed up. But I digress. Let, let's go to questions now. Let's go to some questions. Come on, Gabe. Hit us with them, baby. Here we go. I'll, I'll repeat it. Go on. Rumor that Mario Mancini is coming out of retirement. Can I get wow. Rumor that Mario Mancini is coming out of retirement. How are you going to respond to that, Mario? Listen, I am, um, as, a, as a favor to Jack Kilby, I am going to wrestle on June 29th in a six-man tag team match. Now, well, where's it at? The, it's in Canada. So uh, it, here, does it really count? Here, well, you're out of the state, out of the, out, of the country, out of the country, out of the country. It, 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 well, here, here's the here's the thing. Okay, as we always speak the truth on Hey Roma, it's a six man tag team for a reason because I'm going to be in the ring all three minutes, and my partners will do all the rest of the work. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, if I got something yeah, to say yeah. Mama. Did, oh yeah, Roma's going to be there too. But right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mama didn't. I'm going to talk to those other guys. Mama didn't so raise you know. no fools. Uh, no, Roma does that all the time. He ribs me all the. You have no idea what I've endured in the ring because of Roma. Because he talks to the person I'm working with, and all of a sudden I get stiffed, and I look over, and Roma's got his hands on his knees, going ah. <laughs> and then the guy's picking me up from the hair going, I'm sorry, Roma. Roma told me to do that. And I'm still trying to look uh, out at Roma because Roma told me to do it. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's yeah, good, stuff. good stuff. What else you got there, big guy? Did Uncle Elmer ever try to sell one of you guys a fake Rolex? Valentine's Day. Uncle was, Elmer. Did Elmer. Uncle Elmer ever try to sell us a fake Rolex? Not me. Valentine's Day was a gimmick of uh, Not me either. You know, I heard about him trying to sell them, but, you know, you're in a, a locker room. The, it passes so fast. Everybody knows that they're garbage. So, yeah, no. Paul, how was Brian Pillman to work with in WCW? Was how, was nails, how was Brian Pillman to work with in WCW? Great question. Um, in the very, very, very beginning, when I first came into WCW, uh, Stone Cold and Brian were a little stiff with me. Um, and not when we got into the locker room, I addressed it. And just to say that it was it was a pleasure to work with them after it was addressed. So, no, Brian was, you know, after that one match, he was testing the waters. Steve, too, I get it. You know, hey, welcome in, new guy. You know what I mean? So I get it, but no, it was all good. After yeah, that. wrong guy. <laughs> So Hogan wanted the wife swap with Beefcake, and Missy said no. Um, did you remember that? I thought I... I, I can't comment on that because the only thing I know... I vaguely remember the that. The only thing I know for sure is the the Bubba the Love Sponge thing, and, and he set Hogan up bad. He set Hogan up bad. I feel... I, I, I still feel, feel horrible about that because... You know, they were begging him, and he didn't want to do it. He was begging him and begging him and begging him and begging him, and 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 because they were such good friends, Hogan, Hogan caved. Then, then Bubba tried to screw him for it. That's the only thing I know about swapping like that. As far as Eddie and his and, and Missy, I've never heard that, so I'm not going to comment on that. Yeah. Back to back, Roma. One, they like your haircut. You look younger. Two, 
All right. Hey, they like my haircut, Mancini. But remember now, I just want to know, is that Roman Nation talking or do that Mancini's maniacs? Because they could be, they could jump boat. They could leave Mancini's maniacs and jump on the uh, Roman Nation bandwagon. They if could still if be they maniacs, said that, they, they, must like have, they must have ate too, too many Susie Q's. <laughs> What's the next one? Speaking of Martel, I was thinking, what if Roma would have been given the model gimmick in 89? I know Martel had the French accent, but pretty Paul has a model thoughts. Yeah, so uh, the question is about, you know, taking uh, Martel's model gimmick. It was actually brought up uh, to me by a couple wrestlers, Mr. Perfect being one of them. Uh, Mr. Perfect said that they should have used me for Mr. Perfect, um, just by the way I looked and everything. And, and, I, and I said thank you to him. I said, nah, man. I said, you know, you're, you're good for this, you know? Um, and then when the model came in, they were like, wow, dude, they're just wrecking you. You know, they, you should be the model. If anybody, you look better than Martel. You know, you're better looking guy than Martel. And I was... I was taken back by it. You know, I didn't, as much as we, you know, you listen to, you know, Mario speak about me and um, my head's not, you know, that big. It's big. It's not that big. Um, so, you know, did I think that once they said it? Yeah, I can see that. I had that, that strut about me, that arrogance that I could pull off a model gimmick. But again, Part of the uh, French connection. So, you know, he's in, I'm out. We got a lot. They all just came in. That's right. It's great. Great, qu great questions. Memories of Rusty Brooks. That's, that's more me. Roma. <laughs> Rusty was, was um, a very kind and gentle person. He was a nice guy. Um, he could move. Um, for size, he was very rotund, but he could move. Yeah, he could. Um, you know, he ended up having his own wrestling school. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away. But you know, Rusty was. Um, you can. He's got podcasts on YouTube. You can catch those. Uh, but he's, he's super nice guy. Super nice guy. Do yeah. anything you want. Yeah. Yeah. Very gentle, really. I mean, yeah. Nice for a guy. Big guy, man. He was like. Yeah, a nice guy. I bashed Triple H on a shoot video years ago. I remember those videos. Um, so my opinion changed on, on Triple H when I heard what he was doing for a lot of the boys. How he you know, sat them down and said, hey, listen, you know, short time here, maybe a long time here, but you know, don't throw your money away, invest your money. And uh, you know, somebody very close to me had told me that, and I was like, wow, you know, that's pretty cool. I, I, I dig that about him. I, I think that's great. He was looking out for the boys because a lot of the guys, again, they think it's going to last forever and tomorrow it could be gone because that's how fast Vince will eliminate you. So as far as that goes, yes, I, I thought that was a grand gesture on his part to uh, try and keep everybody from, you know, squandering, getting rid of their money. But overall... Still up in the air now that, you know, this is going down with Vince and him saying that he didn't know, so. Thoughts on Tito Santana? Oh, <laughs> why don't you handle that one there, uh, champ? I like Tito. <laughs> Arriba! You know what that means, right? Listen. Swim faster, the Border Patrol's coming. Listen, I, listen I, I like Tito. I always like Tito. You, you know why? Because, I, including me, he took in... Uh, you know, Tito, we, we had a monitor in the dressing room, and, and when you came back, no matter who you were, if Tito s saw something wrong, he'd say, hey, come here. Yeah, he you was know, good about that. Uh, he, he, and, and he'd take you in a corner and explain things to you and tell you what you should have done. kind of sounds weird to you in a corner, but okay. Well, no, I mean, he'd, he'd tell you what you should have done, and, yeah. and you could do this better and that better. And, you know, I always had a lot of respect for Tito because, you know, he was in the wrestling business, but he he was a wrestler and a true athlete, and a former NFL football player. And and yes, Tito's he, an athlete. He's an he was a he true a, true true authentic athlete, right. and he he took the wrestling business uh, seriously. And I I like seeing Tito today because I told him I said you you know he's 
he's like the closest thing to Strongbow that I have. You know what I mean? Because Chief is. Yeah, he's Mexican. Strongbow is Indian. Indian. I get it. No. Listen, <laughs> let me tell you something. I, I listen. I I've said things about Tito. I like Tito. I like. Tito. I do. When I see Tito, you know, handshake and a hug. I like Tito. When when I started out, you know, on you know, he screwed with me when I traveled with him. He doesn't think I remember that. And you know, whether it was you know real or what we call you know. Uh, a shoe, which is real, or it was a work just to give me a hard time. He was a dick, all right, a bit of a dickhead. But you know, again, now I see him. It's all hugs. Uh, everything is good. Uh, all forgiven. You know, again, it's the past, man. I don't carry it with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> listen, we got a lot of questions. Well, listen, in. I'll put it to you this way, way guys. Um, he's worked for Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, and Paul Roma is the booker for Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. So obviously all is forgiven because I don't yeah. I don't do the booking. I had no, yeah. He does. No, it's, so. it's, yeah, it's all good with Tito. It's all good. Listen, again, it's all good with these guys. Yeah. You know, if I have a grudge, I'll let you know who I have a grudge with. What do you got? Paul, what's your memory of filming the WWF Toyota commercial? In what's my memory of, yeah, okay, so, uh, of filming the Toyota commercial? In Australia. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the commercial actually wasn't filmed in Australia. It was for the Australian market. It was filmed in California. Actually filmed uh, where they filmed the, in the arena, where they filmed the Rocky Balboa fight. Yeah, little tidbit of information there. Um, a lot of fun. Had a great time. Great experience. So glad I did it. Wow. I got to go with Dusty. Dusty's my boy, man. Dusty, the American dream. Don't ask him. He doesn't know how to dance anyway. I know how to salsa. I know, I, I know how to dance. This question's for Mario. Oh, here you go, Mario. Time to answer the call. I got it. What is your favorite candy bar? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's apparent to me now that this wow. person is the first time you're watching this podcast. And if that is from Scott Wilder, I'm not sure. But um, who else would it I, be from? I'm guessing that it's from Scott Wilder. And Scott Wilder knows damn well that my favorite candy bar is a Snickers. I was just going to ring the bell, man. I was going to leave. I was just about to play the drums. A Snickers bar. A Snickers That's right. Bar. And, and Scott, you know that because, you know, you're on the road with him and you bought him a Snickers bar. He's just a disturber, man. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you feel better, by the way. Yeah. Not really. But anyway. Paul, who was an underrated tag team you had to work with? Who was an WWF? underrated tag team we had to work with in WWF? Wow. Underrated tag team. Hmm. I can't recall any. You know, I mean, underrated. No, I think they were all where they should have been. How well did you guys get along with the Ultimate Warrior? He got a lot of heat from other wrestlers. That's an interesting question. How, how, wait a minute, re, say that again. How well did you How get well did we get along with the Ultimate Warrior? Because he had a lot of heat from other wrestlers. Yep. You want to answer that? I'll answer it after you. Oh, well, you can answer it after me if you want, because I actually have an interesting story about that. Okay. So I met Jimmy in Texas, and, and that was the first time he was there, by the way, Roma, was in Texas. And I and for some reason he he like was standing with me and we were talking and everything, and I looked at him and I said, Wow, you're enormous absolutely enormous and at that point he was still the dingo warrior right yeah, yeah i like it let's go with it didn't happen yet so yeah. um so i said listen to me this is a true story i said listen to me when you go out there don't sell anything that's not the way it is here i said don't sell anything i said if the jobber tries to hit you it's like a flea and just crush him don't sell anything so he goes out there and <laughs> the jobber hits him in the stomach and he, he didn't sell it, but he registered it. He registered it. So he, which means people that he bent over when he got punched, but didn't necessarily go like this. So <clears throat> he comes back from his match and he comes back over and stands with me and looks at me and he goes, how was that? 
And I, before I can say anything to him, this was like, I think this was like 87 or whatever. So before I could say anything, Pat Patterson is sprinting toward us, sprinting. And he's going, hey, hey, hey. He probably thought you were trying to pick him up for a date. And Eddie, t- and, and Jimmy turns around and Pat goes, hey, and he, Pat gets him and he goes, hey, don't sell anything when you go out there. Don't sell nothing. Don't sell anything. And Pat walked away, and Jimmy looked at me and went, I go. Right. I you told, told you. Him. Yeah. yeah. There, thereafter, we didn't speak a lot. And then when he was concreted in that thing, and listen, I don't mean to speak ill of him. I think he broke the road record for consecutive days on the road. Uh, that was B. Hercules. All right. So, so Jimmy was sleeping on his bag. And it it was time for catering. It was time for dinner. So I, I kind of shook him. I said, Jimmy, um, you want to go eat? And he kind of mumbled. And I went, Jimmy, you want to go eat? And his foot went up to kick me. And I went, I guess he doesn't want to eat. And that, that I, I really never spoke to him after that. So what's your recollection? No, we, we got along. Um, you know, we didn't, we talked. He respected the fact that I trained hard. I respect the fact that he trained hard. And um, we just, you know, short conversations here and there, nothing special. Uh, there was rumors about him. There were some that seemed to be pretty solid about him. Uh, but it never changed how I felt about the guy. He was respectful to me. I was respectful to him, and it was all good. What else you got there? It's our producer, Gabe, man. He, he says there's a ton. Does Mario like Cadbury eggs? Does Mario like Cadbury eggs? That's got to be Scott Wilder again. <laughs> No, no. It's, it's not Scott Wilder again. All right, so the deal is um, that I don't like the Cadbury cream eggs. I have type 2 diabetes, so I can't eat this. However, I did just make a cheesecake for my sister, and I did it in yellow dye, food dye, um, So Easter, you know. And what I did was top it with those Cadbury hard shell eggs that are, are chocolate-filled. Those I love. Can't eat them. Love them. What do you got there, Gabe? What else? Any new figures for either of you guys, like wrestling figures? Yeah, so uh, Zombie Sailor uh, said that my uh, action figures, they're not dolls. Action figures are uh, now shipping, so they should be here shortly. I hope so. It's been a couple years now. And uh, people have been asking, so she'll be out soon. And as far as my action figure, I asked Zombie Sailor to make one of me. And he said, well, Mario, we can make your head and then take body parts from other figures and Frankenstein one together. He could have had my body. He didn't want it. What are you going to do? You hear that, Emma? Frankenstein one together. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Here's an opinion. The backstory is, hey, Roma, I went to an autograph signing years ago and bought a You Shoot DVD that you did. I then went to Ricky Steamboat's table and had him sign it, and then he gave me a funny look. I then watched the DVD, and you bashed him on it. Has your opinion changed on Ricky the Dragon Steamboat? Again, you know, um, trying to explain to everybody, people are different now when you see them. You know, their, their ego is not out there. We're old. Right, it's not out there anymore. It's in check, so to speak. Um, whether it's because they're old, uh, they got smarter. I, I don't know. Maybe a combination of both. But um, again, I see Ricky. I shake his hand. We don't say two words to one another. Then how you doing? And that's it. You know, I, I go about my business, and and he does his. Um, I have no ill feelings towards uh, towards Ricky, and none and like nobody I know of. Don't have any ill feelings for. Um, some are on the cusp, you know. Like we just, I just answered the Triple H thing, but anybody you want to shove out there, and, and I'll tell you, I'm not hiding anything. What they're going to do? Beat me up? Have a good day. Anyway. Feel free to cut off really just dumb questions. We're, we're getting through them. Uh, Mario, what made you go into the legal background? Mario, what made you go into the legal background? Um, Why, want me to answer I, it, that? It, it was a fluke. Um, I had met this this gentleman in um, 
1992 because at the time my fiance uh, got beat up at work and somebody said, listen, that, that's a workman's compensation case. And I had just got out of the WWF and I'm like, what's workman's compensation? I really didn't know. So, um, so they said, call this guy and I called him and, um, and then we met after that. And when we met, we ended up, we ended up talking for three hours and became friends. He was like a wrestling fan. Um, so when he goes, Hey, you're the guy I watched when I was in law school from Connecticut. You always got your, was, was beat. he, was he this big? Yeah, I know. Cause so, that's what they all say. Yeah. So, so the deal was, um, we talked for about, then he asked, you know, okay, like, again, I had a fiance at the time and he said, we, you know, you and your fiance want to go out to dinner with, with my wife and I, and I'm, I'm like, sure. And, and we just became really good friends. And then in 94, I started going to college. Um, and in 95, he got a hold of me and said, listen, um, my practice is kind of getting big. I'd like you to work for me. I go, dude, doing what? You know? And at the time I was running a security company, uh, a uniform security company. And I'm, he, he's like, I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I'll ruin the friendship. And he asked me again and I went, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to ruin the friendship. Then he said, um, he, he got a hold of my then wife and said listen what is whatever he, he's making i'll double a salary and she's like and i'm like uh okay so i resigned from my job and i went to work for the law firm in 95 my second year of college and then you know he said well what was your goal and i said to get a master's degree in business and grow into the security company i was in he said well why don't you go to law school and i said i'm too dumb to go to law school and he said um i'm no smarter than you and he lied to me and he said i'm no smarter than you are and uh because i did struggle through law school although i got through it i got through it so i that you know i set my goal on going to law school and that's uh that's really how it happened. It's like this, Mart. It's how you end it. And the rest is history. Because this is where he's at, man. Yeah, this is where I'm at. And he's working for a really good friend of his of how many? 35? Uh, uh, 30, 34 years. 34 and, years. Uh, and, you know, he's right because it's like I have a daughter that's going to be 29 in, in August. And he, he actually christened, christened her at birth. So that's her godfather. It's a beautiful and, thing, you know, man. I, and, and, we, and Nick's well, a great guy. I, I've lived with him twice. <laughs> I, give him a, I give him a hard time. I live, he's a great somebody guy. just put a hot dog on my head on TikTok. Yeah. Listen, um, don't. I hope Nick's not watching this because if he hears that I said he's a good guy, he's gonna let it. He's gonna. Yeah, think I, I, I listen. I, my I don't want to like him. My couple of divorces, I actually lived with him. We were like the odd couple. I'd sit on the couch while we're watching Yankee game, going dun 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 dun. dun, dun, dun. What's no. next, Gabe? Mario, is no. it true that Rita was the first woman referee? No. Rita Chatterton was the first female referee in the WWF. In fact, the first female referee in the history of pro wrestling debuted in Canada prior to Rita. There you go. Where did you prefer to work? WWF or WCW? Where did I prefer to work? WWF or WCW? Wow. Um, well, you know, wrestling with, with Hercules... I have to say WWF. It, it was just so great. When I went to WCW, hooking up with Paul Orndorff was, you know, a, a second to that, which was nice. There was less stress in the WCW locker room than there was a WWF locker room. So the best way I can answer that. Was Paul around the night that Sid and Arn stabbed each other? Was Paul around the night Sid and, and Arn stabbed each other? Well, Sid actually stabbed Arn. Um, and, yeah, I believe Paul was there. And I believe Paul pulled Arn, uh, or pulled Sid off Arn, screamed at him, and that's when, like, I, I guess he was, like, it, he was in a, a state of being a nut. And when, when he... Uh, he screamed at him and, and jerked him off him. That's when that didn't sound right. That's when uh, Sid ran back into his room. Um, yeah, that's kind of crazy. I wasn't there on that trip. I wish I had been. Mario. Mario. Google clusters. You like them? Google clusters. You should ask me that question. Of course, he likes Google clusters. You know what? what a so, question. Uh, all He's right. a diabetic. All right. Loves so, them. Listen, somebody's doing their homework. 
somebody's doing it's gotta be Scott. Scott is somebody's doing yeah. their homework. Yeah. So yeah, I do like yeah. Google clusters. Yeah. Uh, homemade in Tennessee. Although available at um at uh um They're not in England. No. I can tell no, you right now, I was no, in England. I went no, to every no. store I can to find Google clusters to surprise this guy. No, no. They're they're available in the gift shop at um what's that restaurant off exit forty there? Oh, are you kidding me? Come uh, on, forgot come on, kid. Me. Listen, I just buy them Google clusters to make them eat them and watch them just shake. You know what I mean? It's 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 good. It's like it's like a wind up doll. That's that's how he starts walking after a while. Uh-huh. It's, it's phenomenal. Just kidding. We're, we're getting to the end now. All right, almost at the end. Here we go. A couple more. What was the locker room talk of Dino Bravo's connections with the mafia? None. Uh, none. Zero. Zero. Lenny Poffo. Poffo. What's your thoughts on Lenny Poffo? Well, I'll tell you what. You could tell that our producer is that young. You yeah, know who Lanny, do you know who Lanny Poffo is? No, he called him Lenny Poffo. Poffo. Lanny Poffo is the brother of Randy Ma- Macho Man Savage. Right. Gentleman. Very, very nice guy. Just a great, a great person. And And you know what? The way he spoke, because he really spoke well like an English teacher, that's the way he really was, and that's the way he really spoke. He did speak that way. And um, he was just a gentleman and a, ni- a nice guy. I can tell you this. Um, when his brother passed away, being Randy Macho Man Savage, he really lived for his brother. I mean, Roma and I bumped into him at an auto- autograph show, and he didn't talk about himself. All he talked about the entire time was his brother. Yeah. So, um, you know, he he dedicated the rest of his life to his brother. The only thing is... You know, Lanny, which you have to be, listen, I, I had this conversation the, the other day, like, you know, <clears throat> although I've, I've met a couple of very nice women, it, it's, it's really rough when you get out of the wrestling business because your, your chances of, of being with a woman while you're in the WWF, uh, WWF are like, your odds are like, phenomenal so so, um but you don't know why they're with you whether it's for you being a wrestler or they like you for who you are right so so uh, people go through a lot of or they want your google wrestlers go through a lot of women on the road and when you get out of that element and you you become a, a say for the lack of a better term a regular person you know and you're out of the out of the TV long it's you're just another regular person i think lanny got caught up in that and um i asked him one time i said brother what the hell are you doing because on his facebook he would go to the what country did he go to um it was it was like similar to like uh, Cambodia or something like that. If any and anybody knows, I think he bought a house there, and he he would post pictures on Facebook because I was friends with him on Facebook with a lot of maybe the Philippines, uh, uh, a lot of beautiful Filipino women, and he's in his sixties and they're like in their mid twenties, and I'm like brother what are you doing he goes well what do you think i mean these women are beautiful i'm like so it's not like you're moving to the philippines now uh, no no because because i gotta check this guy man google clusters because he over he he overworked himself and and he had a heart attack so um good for him well he passed away so Uh, listen what what better way to go i guess I i don't know i don't know he came and went at the same time i guess i don't know Scott Wilder. This is a Scott Wilder question. It, it, it can't, it's for me. It can't be good. How do you deal with being so ugly now? How do I deal with being so ugly now? Wow. And that coming from somebody who, oh, I don't know, wears a bag over his head when we go out. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. I don't. He does. Uh, it's a big bag, just so you know. Yeah. Nice, hefty bag. Anyway. Final question. Final question, people. Here we go. How was the last Paradise Alley event, and what's next for Paradise Alley? How was the last Paradise Paradise Alley event, and what's next for Paradise Alley? Um, want me to jump on that one? 
Sure, I just want to start out by saying that it was it, a part of it was exciting because we have a new uh, woman's champion, uh, Daje Simone, who um, was in a, a three-way uh, that night and and came out victorious over a very large opponent. Yeah, Sammy so Chaos. Uh, she is um, and and end up defeating uh, Sammy Chaos and Skyler. Skyler. So congratulations to. Miss Simone for being the the new Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling Women's Champion, um, but I will hand that answer over to the Booker, who's in charge of booking the talent and creating the storylines. Well, listen, we 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 have a tremendous fan base. We're we're always so grateful, thankful that they they come in droves the way that they do, uh, the excitement. That, that they, you know, just show, you know, being there for, for all of our wrestlers. And we have a great, great bunch of wrestlers. Um, we have more shows coming up. We have the uh, the brewery. Armada. Uh, Armada uh, Brewery in New Haven. On April, April 6th. April 6th. So uh, we're going to be there. Uh, every Saturday. Well, we try to be there the first Saturday. For, but if not first, second Saturday right. of every month. But in, we'll be there in, every month until starting October. in uh, what, April, April, I believe. April. In April. Next week. And the, Yeah, next week and there until October. Right. Uh, we will also hold a show at our, our place, our facility. That'll be April 20th. Yep. Um, until it gets really hot. We don't like to you know be in there, like to be outside. Thinks it's, we think it's better that way. Um, but again, love the fans. Can't thank you enough. You're really what makes it all happen for PAPW. Absolutely. And the students that we have, they're phenomenal students. Absolutely. You're going to see these people. You're going to see them all over. They're all over now, a lot of them. But uh, they're wrestling everywhere in the United States and outside the United States and Canada. So, uh, again, we thank you so much. Um, glad that, you know, you all watch. And you're, you're making this happen. And I'm going to let my... Mancini here, you know, with the maniacs. Um, you want to throw Stephen Lee's uh, famous line out there now? Where are? Where in the world is? That's right. Um, world is. If we could listen, it, it, Stephen Lee's not hard to get a hold of. He's Steve Lee on Facebook. If you are a veteran or if you served in the military and you're wondering where John or Bill or Rick or Phil is, or Alice, or, or Alice, or Betty, or whoever, yeah. that you were were very close to in the military, but after you got out of the military, you lost contact. Where in the world is, is to unite our military. Um, and in case nobody knows the first place where to look, uh, get a hold of Steve Lee on Facebook. Uh, like Roma says, in the future, we will have a phone number um, we, we will have guests. I know guys, it's frustrating. We keep saying we're going to have guests on here, but we will. Um, what I'd like to do probably to make it happen faster is have a guest here, kind of take my chair and have, you know, Roma with them. And when their interview is over, I'll, I'll just come back in. Yeah, I, we I, can, listen, we could fit them in. Listen, or, John, again, a police officer. We right, wanted to bring him on. Right. Uh, something came up. It, it's, you know, unfortunate that it came up. But uh, we'll, again, we'll get people on here. Uh, we're going to fulfill what people asked us to fulfill, and we will do that. Um, but in the meantime, again, we are happy, glad that you all join us. Um, let me just do this. Hey, Roma. That's exactly what the show is about. Uh, you call in. You write in. Ask K Roma. I got Mario Mancini here. We are Hey Roma Deep. We don't avoid anything. We don't speak around it. We speak directly to you. You're going to hear it whether you like it or not from both of us. So, with that being said, next week, next Friday, um, I hope everybody who celebrates. Roma does. I yep. do ha have do. a very safe and happy Easter. I'd like to leave what, what you started with because I, I, it'll bother me if I leave this out. Damn, Eric Bischoff takes one of, the, if not the greatest wrestler that ever entered the ring. And how did he debut Bret Hart as a guest guest referee? This was the referee. brain that they were working with. Okay, right. enough said. Happy <laughs> Easter. Stay safe. Yep. 
Happy and, Good um, Friday. Happy Good Friday, and um, you know, good. You know, don't forget to to um, think about and ponder what Good Friday is and what it means to all of us. And Say how, your prayers, how, man. How, how thankful we are, and um, we'll see you guys next. From Friday. Mancini's Maniacs in Roman Nation. Roman Nation. Listen, hey Roma. We'll see y'all next week. Next week. Thanks for.